Hello everyone and welcome back to Piggy Board Gamer. My name is Hector Rakos and in today's video I will explain the game Honey Buzz. The game is designed by Paul Salomon and produced by Elf Creek Games. This is a game about bees understanding economics which start to sell their honey in the market. The game is for 1-4 to four players and takes about an hour to finish. Let's start with a quick overview and then we continue with the rules of the game. In Honey Buzz, bees have discovered economics and are selling their honey in the bear market. Each player has a personal hive and by placing tiles is trying to create empty hexes that can be filled with nectar tiles. The type of nectar that can be placed depends on the borders of these empty hexes. Then, by placing their fan tokens in strategic hexes, players produce honey which they trade by selling it in the bear market. In the end, players score victory points on various categories such as coins and remaining resources. The hive that is awarded the most victory points will win in Honey Buzz. At first, connect the two main boards in the middle of the table. Both of the boards are double-sided. The side of the hive board depends on the number of players. The woodland board has an A side for the standard game and a B side for the advanced game. In a standard game of two players, these are the sides that will be used. Then sort the standard hive tiles according to their type and place them in the indicated spaces on the hive board. Next to the board create supplies of coins, honey and pollen. On the board there is a market area with one column per type of honey and another column for pollen. Place a specific honey token in the top space of the corresponding column. Then place a pollen token in the top space of the pollen column as well. Pollens come in different colors, but they're all the same. In a two players game only, like in our case here, you need to shift all of the markers one space downwards. Next take the queen contest cards and separate them according to their type. Then from each one of the types you must randomly take one of the cards to be used in the game. However, in your first game it is recommended that you use the cards that depict a little star in this illustration. The three selected cards will be placed facing upwards in these specific spaces on the board. The remaining cards will not be used and returned in the box. These cards give specific objectives and grant awards depending on who comes first, second or third. Cards that depict these flag symbols are speed contests. If in a two-player game you just place the top award on the card. If it's a three-player game, you also place the second award. And if it's a four-player game, you also place the prize for the third player. In the bottom right corner of the woodland board, there are spaces for three order stacks. You will create these stacks using small and large order cards. After you separate them, shuffle them, and then place two large order cards to each one of the spaces. Then, in a two-player's game, add one small order card on top of these stacks. In a three player game you place two small order cards instead of one and in a four player game three small order cards. Remaining cards return to the box and the three stacks are placed facing downwards on their dedicated spaces. Finally flip the top card from each stack facing upwards. Each player then selects one of the colors and takes the personal board, the ten beeples, the four starting tiles, a forage token and the fun token of the corresponding color. Each player also takes one player aid. Then the player who woke up first that day takes the first player token and the rest of the player turn order is determined clockwisely. Players place their 10 beeples as a supply next to the board. Then the first player starts the game with 5 coins and one of their beeples from the supply the second player with 10 coins and 1 beeple, if there is a third player with 15 coins and a beeple, and if there is a fourth player with only 5 coins but 2 beeples. Next you need configuration cards. In every game you need only one of these cards and the rest will return to the box. These cards are distinguished to green standard cards and yellow veteran cards which are more advanced. Normally you select which cards to use, you shuffle the stack and you pick one at random. However, for your first game you are advised to use the green card which depicts this star. If players select the card with a star, 
all players will use their starting hive tokens to create their starting hive exactly as depicted in this card. If any other card is used, then the first player will create their starting hive first, following the exact shape of the card, but using any orientation with the tiles. When the first player is done, then all other players will replicate the starting hive of the first player. So in every game, the starting hive of every player is exactly the same. Next we will use the nectar tokens to populate the field area of the board. After you separate the tiles according to their type, if in a three player game you remove one tile from each stack and two tiles from each stack if in a two player game like in our example. In a four player game you don't remove any of the tiles. Then you flip the tiles facing downwards and you shuffle them. Then you randomly place tiles facing upwards, completing columns starting from the left and moving to the right. In a three player game you'll have enough tiles to fill this column and in a four player game you'll have enough tiles to complete the field. Then each player will place their forage token in one of the starting spaces on the left of the field. Players must use a different starting space. You can do this at random or start with the last player and use a reverse turn order. The game is now ready to start. At this point, I would like to say that if you like this video and our videos in general, please show your support by subscribing to this channel. It is so important for us. Also, make sure that you hit that bell button so you get notified of our future videos. In the game, players alternate turns starting with the first player and continuing clockwisely indefinitely until the end of the game is triggered. On their turn, players have two options either to take one hive tile by placing at least one of their workers into these areas and their second option is to recall all of their workers from the board back to their personal supply. Of course, if you have no available workers to take a tile, then recalling your workers is your only option. Let's analyze first the take a tile action. As you can see, the hive board is split to a number of areas. If you want to take a tile from an area which is unoccupied, you simply need to place one of your beeples in that area and then you take one of the available tiles there. If you want to take a tile from an area which is occupied, you need to place a stack of beeples which is higher than the next tallest one. This is still the same when you want to take a tile from an area occupied by yourself. If a player chooses to take the decree tile, they must also pay 5 coins to the general supply. After the player takes the tile, they must place it into their hive. Hive tiles are connected using their yellow sides, not the white and not the red. So I could connect this tile like that, but I could not connect it like this or like that. After the player places the new tile in a valid position, that player's turn is over. However, if placement of the new tile has created an empty hexagon, then the player activates all action icons that are adjacent to the empty hex. It is possible that with one placement you create multiple empty hexes. So let's explain each one of the depicted actions. When the accounting action is activated, the player gains 5 coins from the general supply. Please note that the supply of coins is infinite. With a forage action, players send their bees to collect nectar from the field. The action offers a free movement of the player's token, but then the player can spend 2 coins to gain an extra move, and the player can do this any number of times. As you saw, players move their tokens to orthogonally adjacent field spaces. Also, they can move through or even end their movement on top of other players' tokens. At the end of their movement, if the nectar tile matches the new empty hex on that player's hive, the player collects it. To take a nectar tile, the surrounding borders of that tile must match the type of borders of the new empty hex. The pattern of my empty hex matches the pattern of rosemary. The hex I'm located is a rosemary hex, so I can take it and add it into the empty hex of my hive. Another example, if you end your movement in an empty space, 
or on a nectar tile which is not compatible with empty hexes on your board, you instead gain one pollen from the supply. With a new B action, the player takes one of their meeples from the general supply, which is temporarily placed into this nursery area of the board. If you have no remaining meeples in the supply, then this action has no effect. The player will collect these new workers the next time they perform a recall worker's turn. However, these workers, even not yet available, they are considered to be your workers for other card effects. With a produce action, the player places their fan token onto any hex on their hive. Then, all nectar adjacent to the fan becomes honey and the player places the corresponding honey token from the supply. To nectar tiles that already had honey, this action will have no further effect. With a market action, the player chooses either to sell to the market or complete an order card. If you choose to sell to the market, then you choose any one type of honey or your pollen. Currently, I have two rosemary honeys onto my hive, so I could choose to sell both of them with the same action. The rosemary marker on the table indicates the amount of coins I will gain for each rosemary honey I sell. So I can sell both of them and gain 12 coins. After you gain the coins, you move the corresponding marker one space downwards, thus decreasing the price of the next sale. Alternatively, you can complete one order if you can spend the depicted types of honey on any one of the cards from your hive. If you do, you spend them and take the corresponding card in front of your play area. This card will grant you victory points at the end of the game, but you also activate the action depicted beneath the stack of the cards. So now I can also execute the produce action. After you're done with the action, you flip the top card from the stack facing upwards. Finally, the decree action is a wild action. When you activate a decree, you can execute any action from the ones we just explained. Everything explained so far has to do with the player performing a take a tile turn. Instead of taking a tile, the player can take a recall worker's turn. In this case, the player first collects all of their beeples from the hive board as well as from the nursery area and places them back to their personal supply. Then the player also scouts for nectar, moving their forage token using the same rules explained earlier. The difference with the forage action is that the player cannot pay to move additional spaces and cannot collect a nectar tile or a pollen token. They simply gain a free move. In every game there are three queens contests awarding bonuses to the players. The ones with the flag are speed contests. As soon as any player satisfies the requirement depicted on the top of the card, the player will gain the highest price available on the top of the card. The last player never takes a prize, so immediately after any player takes the third order to their play area, they will also gain these 20 coins. These are final contests and have a meaning only during scoring. At that point, players will be ranked according to the card and they will gain victory points depending on the rank they gain. This one says, the most nectar clusters. A cluster is formed by three nectar cells that are adjacent to a common hex. A cell can be part of many clusters. When all three cells of a cluster contain a nectar tile, then this is called a nectar cluster. If all of the three cells were empty, this would be called an empty cluster. This here, however, is just a cluster which is not empty and not a nectar cluster as well. So for the sake of this contest card, I have two nectar clusters on my board. Other cards refer to a straight line in your hive. This one says most empty cells in a straight line. I currently have three empty cells. However, whichever straight line I take, I have only one empty cell. If two players tie for a given place, each of these players receive the full payout for that place. The next player's payout, however, is decreased by one place. So if we had two players tying for the most nectar clusters, 
they would both gain 20 points and if there were a third player in the game, that player would gain 5 points. If three players tie for a rank, again all players will take the full payout of that rank but there will be no further payout to any other player. The game's end can be triggered with two ways. The first one is when four out of five resources of the game have reached the bottom space. The game's end is also triggered when there is only one order stack remaining. When the game's end is triggered, then the game continues until all players have had equal number of turns. So the last turn in the game will be that of the player who sits to the right of the first player. In scoring, players first score the value of their accumulated coins in victory points, so I gained 35 points from that. Then the player gains one victory point for every honey or pollen remaining in their play area. You also score the victory point award depicted in your completed orders. Finally, players are ranked and gain victory points according to the final contest cards on the board. After scoring, the player with the highest score is the winner. If there is a tie, then the first tiebreaker is the most remaining resources. The second one is the most completed orders. And if a tie still exists, then all tied players share their victory. And that was this very nice puzzle game, Honey Buzz. If you like our videos and want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, have fun and play more board games.